This is getting exciting now, Cameron. Don't so scare. I'm literally not doing it. No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scar. My brother Matt and I are on our fourth day of exploring the South Carolina Adventure Route, otherwise known as the SCAR for short. It's about 1,100 miles of forestry roads, rural back roads, and off-road trails that consist of rocks, gravel, sand, and mud. Our plans were to continue where we left off in the northeast section heading towards Lake Jocassi, but the weather had other plans. Severe storms were moving into that area, so we decided to change course and head to the lower portions of the state where the storms have already passed through. All right, this is where the adventure begins. This meant we might be dealing with some mud on this section of the trip. We just didn't know exactly how much. I think it's gonna be muddy. All right, everybody, welcome to the next part of our SCAR trip. Uh, I'm here with a different group this weekend. I got Matt with me again, although he's in a different vehicle. We'll talk about that in a minute. I got Brian with me. He's in the FJ Cruiser. And of course, I'm in the trusty Land Cruiser. We're gonna go ahead and air down the tires a little bit just to kind of make this a little bit more of a comfortable ride because it's, it's, it's bumpy. So we'll just absorb a little bit of that bump with airing down these tires. Then we'll get on with this trip and see what this adventure holds. Getting a little soupy out here. Woo oh yeah. So because the Francis Marion National Forest is very flat and coastal, it's basically a swamp, which if you're familiar with the character Francis Marion, uh, which this is named after, his nickname during the Revolutionary War was the Swamp Fox. So this whole land area is very swampy and because it's been raining recently, all of these dirt, sandy roads are now just very slushy and soupy and muddy. know if I'm nervous or excited that the ditch on the left side is completely full of water. <laughs> We were having a great time exploring the trails, but before we knew it, it was 4 p.m. and the sunset would be coming quickly, and we still have yet to find a campsite. It, uh, it's coming up on four o'clock, which means it's gonna be getting dark fairly soon. It's December, so it gets dark, you know, 5, 5.30, it's starting to get dark, especially in the middle of the woods. Uh, so we need to start looking for a campsite pretty soon. But the, the next sort of mapped campsite that we're familiar with, is a little ways away, so I think we're gonna have to really pick up the speed in order to make it so that we're not trying to set up in the dark and cook in the dark and all that kind of stuff. So, oh gosh, um, it's time to start looking for a camp spot. So this area we're in, uh, the Palmetto Trail, it's a walking trail, goes through the state, runs, kind of weaves in and out of this area we're in. We just found like a trailhead slash camping area for the for the hikers, except for, it looks like there's people living here. This is quite funny. So, you hear banjo music, skinny pedal. It may not be obvious on camera, but in person, it's obvious they've, they've been here for a while. Okay, I'm ready to roll. Yeah. Things were not going well, and every campsite we found was a complete bust. It's like right right through there is where the... I think we're going to be setting up camp in the dark. For sure. Uh, 
at this point we are still not having any luck finding a place to camp it's only 5 30 but it's pretty stinking dark out there um, the sun is going to be down completely gone probably in the next 10 minutes so we'll be doing everything in the dark which is fine we've got something potential in mind um, but at this point I'm not getting my hopes up because we keep finding like just duds Eventually we found ourselves in the dark traveling one of the most challenging trails yet and we had no idea where it was going or if we'd be able to find a campsite. <laughs> that was quite the uh, quite the uh, adventure finding something. This I think is gonna work. It's a pretty open clearing, dead end down. There's something in the woods right there. Oh yeah, yeah there is. Bears occur in every county in South Carolina except Beaufort County. Really? Yep. Interesting. <laughs> well, we get the sharks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having found our campsite for the night, we set up camp and started working on dinner. We had no way of knowing then, but tomorrow would be way more epic. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Last night was an interesting night. We heard all kinds of weird noises and we were, we were just discussing amongst us whether we thought it was a coyote owls it was some howly type noises and then around 4 a.m we heard a lot of gunfire someone would like mag dumped something We've got a lot of things going on for breakfast it sounds like we're gonna do some pancakes and some bacon all right we are all packed up and ready to go so the plan today is to try to find our campsite a little sooner and play around in an area, explore that area, and then go back to that campsite, assuming we find one. If we don't, we'll have to continue looking. Um, but that's the plan. That's what we're trying to accomplish this morning. Once back on the road and following the scar, it wasn't long before we started hitting mud puddles. Small ones at first, but eventually they got massive. <laughs> uh, so we just encountered our first sort of obstacle here. That's a pretty, let me show you guys. That's a, that's a mud pit, and this is some slippery mud. I should probably tie my shoes before I step right out of them. I'm going, dude. So you hang out and wait and watch me get stuck. I'm tying my shoes. Wish me luck. This is a terrible idea. Although it's probably not nearly as bad as I think. I could be very wrong about that. We'll find out. I think it's probably smart if I go ahead and put this in four low and turn on the lockers now before I'm stuck and trying to bury myself. The goal of running the SCAR isn't just off-roading and camping, but also getting to see some of the beauty and history South Carolina has to offer along the way. We just arrived at the Hampton Station Historical Site. We're gonna check this out, see, what, see what's going on. sites. Yeah. What's that place in Beaver? Hunting Island area. Oh, oh gosh. It's like, yeah, crumbling. Yeah. 
So this is the grave site of some very famous Rutledge family. I'm trying to read some of these. But the Rutledge family in South Carolina go back to the 1700s. Clearly, you gotta be somebody important here in this family to be buried inside of the fence, I guess we'll call it. Very interesting, very cool. Um, there was a tree over there that had a placard on it that was saved by George Washington himself. I guess he didn't want that tree cut down. All right, look at that tree, good Lord. The Hampton Plantation State Historical Site is a colonial era home of the Rutledges, one of whom, Edward Rutledge, signed the Declaration of Independence. This former rice plantation was also home to over 200 slaves and eventually to freed slaves. During the Revolutionary War, Francis Marion, who you'll learn about a little bit more in the next video, was nearly captured here, but managed to escape the British by swimming across the creek and hiding in the rice fields. Stay tuned for the next episode where we get deeper into the mud, find an incredible campsite, and see a little more of South Carolina's history. If you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified of the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.